Actually, I hope I'm not the only one that thought it was a dreadful game. <laughs> we had 69 tackles. I don't think we had a free kick from a tackle. 69 tackles, and not one of them can be adjudicated holding the ball. It's just like, what's, what's happened to our game? You can't have that many tackles and not one of them be incorrect disposal. If that's the spectacle that we're trying to search for in our game, our game's in a dreadful space. I'm sorry for shit canning our own brand and our own club and our own team in this space, but I was so disappointed with the way we played and I was so disappointed with the way that the game is being played right at the present time. It's frustrating. I am loving the umpiring philosophy who is giving the player in possession every opportunity and every benefit of the doubt. So I love that umpiring philosophy, which means I'm completely diagonally opposed to the way Alistair Clarkson says his football. Well, I'm a Luddite here, but I'm with Lee Matthews and I, I cannot for the life of me see how the statesman of the game in coaches, Alistair Clarkson, after a primetime Sunday night game, would, as he called it, escan the game and the brand so strongly. He, you could not get him off it, Ross. No, he was... It, he has was, it got to be to do with the fact that there's no Hodge, no Mitchell, no Ruffhead? Well, there's an argument. The rules haven't changed and his system's the same, but they're not scoring. But I do agree with the... He made this point when the Bulldogs beat him in the final in 2016. They laid an extraordinary amount of tackles, 90, and didn't get rewarded. So... And Lee Matthews is right. I think right. he had we a crack to... at the Bulldogs after they won the flag, didn't he? But I don't think he's meeting. a sook. I think he's got the best... In... Look, is he looking after his own backyard? Only Alistair can say that. But his point where players... I thought Gillen summed it up. Players are that well trained. They come up, they look to dispose, they see it, and they pull it back in. They take the tackle. That needs to be penalised, and we will get spread. Lee Matthews is right. We're bought up on put your head over the ball, son, go and win it. But we need to strike an equilibrium, a balance to how it's being adjudicated. You need to bring back one rule. In the back. There was, we watched those ones there. We re rolled those tapes here. There was three or four in the back decisions yeah. there. Oh. That, that gives Lee's tick. So the bloke who goes for the ball gets protected. And I agree with Al. I think it's a bit of column and A, incorrect column disposal B. and yeah. taking the tackle. That's so it. And if you take it and you hold on to it too long and you drag it down, free kick. Humpy's um, got to get on the whistle. Let's buy a balance. Yeah. Let, let's find a balance. It's not the umpire's yeah. fault. That's what they're being told. Uh, Lloyd, before I come to you, mate, I want to just uh, put uh, this grab up from Chris Scott, who had his point of view. I'll do whatever they tell me to do. Yeah. And, and th that's my mindset. Mm. I think less asking, more telling. And secondly, if your issue is congestion, you want the ball to flow better and make it harder to defend, reduce the number of players on the field, increase the number of players rotating, and the ball will ping around, and it will be so hard to coach and so hard to defend. So let's, I got a phone call today, believe it or not. It was interesting off the back of Chris uh, Scott there from Lloyd Williams. And he reminded me of a conversation we'd had and uh, that uh, when Kerry Packer got the uh, football here at Channel 9, Kerry Packer was a great understander of sports. He played footy at Geelong Grammar. Uh, he would often ring and talk about the tactics of the game. Knew what he's doing. He was the guy who invented uh, one-day internationals, but also the, the fielding restrictions to get the game going, to beat the tactics of the coaches and the captains at the time. And uh, Lloyd reminded me of this. Uh, put the graphic up. This is the way that Kerry wanted to go things. He reckoned that football should go to 15 a side. And we put this up at the moment. So you get rid of a forward pocket and the back pocket at either end and you get rid of the ruck rover in the middle. So you keep your wings because there's no point shoving them all up the skinny end where it gets congested. Keep it through the midfield. Get one person out of the centre so it's two players come out of the centre bounce and two at each end and get it going. And he was uh, a bit different to what Scotty was saying there. Scotty's saying uh, don't uh, have unlimited interchange. Kerry was up for no interchange but have reserves. Go back to the old days and let them play and get the tactics going. He believed that that would open up and you'd just get a fast flowing, you get players getting fatigued, you kick the ball longer to position, it open up the game. Well, Discuss. Well, as coaches, we have practice games and internal practice games where those numbers are evident, 15 and 16, and the congestion is in there and it does, it does flow, but there's a few rusted on that aren't prepared to play around with density of numbers on the field. So you're never going to know unless you give it a go. So let me put it to you, Caro. You can put your, uh, your, your journos cap here from a financial point of view. If you went to 15 on the ground and you had four interchange, that means there's three less players getting paid every week, which means the, the big-name players can get more money, they need less lists, et cetera, et cetera. Is it worth discussing or have we touched the game enough? Well, well, 16 aside is something that I think they should, at the very least, in all these scratch games that are going on at the moment, Matthew, with the players who can't play reserves, why wouldn't you experiment with well, it? Well, I think what Chris is saying, where I, I don't want to see it, I think that yep. still the top four teams, or four of the top seven, in the, you know, the Suns and Port Adelaide and Brisbane and St Kilda, I'm still enjoying watching them play, and it's great that they're in the top seven on the ladder because they are playing quite an enjoyable game mm. of football. Chris, I don't think you can go off VFL football. 
Um, what he's he's no. really enjoying the scratch matches at the moment. They're probably just going out there and playing footy, in my opinion. I don't think they'd be. They're not. They don't. The results meaningless. It doesn't really matter well, who wins but, and who loses. But I put my coaches. Yeah. When you've got an intimate understanding how team defences work and yeah. they work on a string, yeah. and the the wingers connect the forwards and the backs and the off ball. It's a no-brainer to take out a link to open it up. When, when would you do it? Say pre-season next year. I'd love to see it pre-season next year. I don't care when you do it, but I know it will help. So where yeah. would you go, Ross? Uh, the, uh, that, that, that ground, pull out a forward pocket, pull out one in the middle, pull a back pocket at the other end? Well, I think that's just the starting point because they're going to move. But at the minute, you've got three big bulls inside. They're, they're six foot four, those guys, and they've got fleet of foot on the outside. But if you have to make a choice and there's only two, well, you might lose two insiders and keep your runners. Coaches what? will have to make a choice.